Did you think that Elon Musk and Neuralink were the only ones interested in looking what's going on inside your brain? Well, you are wrong, because there are other companies interested in developing neural interfaces, brain machine interfaces, and we look at one of them today. Kernel. Now, Kernel is a company that was founded in 2016 by Brian Johnson, a young American entrepreneur, and it's a company whose objective is to read and understand the human brain, and of course, as it is for other companies that are developing brain computer interfaces, one of the objectives is to help people with neurodegenerative diseases. Now, the company is developing non-invasive brain computer interfaces, so it is different with respect to Neuralink, which is instead developing an invasive interface, so something that has to be physically implanted in your skull, while Kernel is developing something non-invasive. And specifically, what we look at today are two devices that are developed by Kernel. One of them has been, in fact, presented more recently. It is the one where we have more information on. There are Kernel Flux, and kernel flow. Now regarding kernel flux we don't have a lot of information. We know that the device is somewhat around 1.6 kilograms in weight, let's say something around the bicycle helmet in size which is similar to in fact kernel flow but the principle is different because the principle is magnetoencephalography to read the brain. In fact what they use are magnetometers to read the brain activity the brain activity in terms of magnetic fields. So the brain, of course, is full of electrical discharges between neurons, and these neurons, of course, they generate a magnetic field, and this is read by the magnetometers. And so with this technique, we can read and we can understand what is going on inside the brain. Now, this is not new per se, but Kernel is promising a lighter device. It's promising a device that is much smaller and much more appealing to a consumer. The device that is being developed by Kernel, Kernel Flux, is a device that includes 48 models with 720 channels. Now, why 720 channels is relevant? Well, the thing is, when you detect the magnetic field inside the brain, there is the risk that you detect also some noise, because of course you have devices lying around, you have computers, you have smartphones, you have all sorts of devices that are emitting magnetic fields. So what you want to do is that you want to reduce all these emissions and having more channels, so detecting more data is vital for it. Now let's talk about the big boy, the protagonist of this video, which is Kernel Flow. Now we've seen Kernel has presented a presentation recently detailed the devices and presenting an actual prototype of this device. And this device is based on a different principle, so it does not detect the magnetic field, but it sends light pulses, near-infrared light pulses inside the brain, and it reads the back signals. The system that is used is called a time domain functional near-infrared spectroscopy system, which is a bit of a mouthful, but we will explain now what all these terms mean. Now, the principle at the basis of this, of this device is that when neurons use oxygen, the blood color changes from a reddish tone to a bluish tone. So what we want to do is we want to shine the neurons, to shine the brain, and to see the light that changes, to see this light bouncing back and detecting it with the, with the device and seeing this change color, this change color that can indicate to us where brain activity is happening, so which regions of the brain are active, so we can infer what is going on inside the brain, basically. Which is somewhat of a similar principle as the one presented by Open Water, and I'm going to, to make a video about Open Water soon, but the idea of Open Water is similar, so to use uh, red or infrared light. Why infrared and red, by the way? Why are they important? Well, the thing is that the human body is translucent to red and infrared light, so the light just passes. That's why it's, it's important, it passes through the tissue. And the technique that is used to infer information about, about a system from uh, the changes in its color, it's called spectroscopy, so that's why it's a spectroscopy system. Time domain instead means that something is, is computed in function of time. So what we want to see is not only the pulses when they come back, the light pulses, but we also want to see when these light pulses come back. So how long does it take for a light pulse to hit the target and to come back, because from this information we can detect the light path and we can detect the depth of the light pulse. So basically 
which region was impacted. So what we do is that we, we use this device to send very short, very rapid light pulses. So bah, 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 bah. these light pulses, they illuminate and we get the signals back. We get all this amount of data about photos going back to the detectors and we use mathematical models, Monte Carlo models to analyze all this information and to get an idea about the spread and the shape of these photons. And with this information we can combine it with models about the brain, models about the brain anatomy to get a precise idea of what is going on inside this brain. Now what is the resolution of this device? What can we observe with this device? I'm Unfortunately, we cannot observe the whole brain. We can just reach the cortex. We cannot go through the entire layers of tissue because there is a limit to how much the body is translucent to red and infrared light. So we can just read the outer layer of the cortex, but that is enough to get an idea of what is going on inside the brain. In terms of spatial resolution, we can get according to kernel, a resolution of up to one centimeter. And in terms of temporal resolution, kernel is promising a temporal resolution of about 200 Hertz. So 200 uh, impulse, 200 detections per second, which is more than enough because compared to the other systems, they can promise up to one Hertz. Now to get a better map of a brain, we need a lot of detectors because the brain functions as a whole. And of course we want to image as much of the brain as possible. So we want to get as much data as possible. So that's why the device incorporates several detectors placed around the head, more detectors, better spatial resolution and a better map. And now we see, finally, we take a look at this device at kernel flow itself. Now the device as we can see is basically a modular device. So it's composed of different modules that are installed in this flexible sort of bigger device that can adapt to different skull shapes so it can adapt to different customers it covers most of the head as we have seen it's very important to image as much brain as possible the weight is around 1.5 kilograms so not too far from kernel flux and the number of modules now we go a little bit more in depth with the modules the number of modules is 52 these modules are organizing clusters located around the different areas that are of interest in the brain so the prefrontal cortex and the auditory cortex and visual cortex and so on so we can image all these all these areas the modules per se are basically made by two elements one laser so the laser pulse that we've seen and six detectors located around the laser the modules are self-contained and overall in the device there are about four or five microprocessors that collect all the data and they set it outwards now, modularity is also important, not only from, let's say, an engineering point of view, but also from a customer point of view, because it is possible, kernel is promising, it is possible to buy subsets of these modules. So instead of buying the whole device and use the whole device, you can buy just sus subsets if you are interested in imaging a specific area of your brain. Talking about the technology per se, so the laser, we've seen it's a pulse laser, it is a frequency of about 20 megahertz, and it's a laser that is powered at about four or five milliwatts. Now, four or five milliwatts, it's not that much. It's, I mean, one thousandth of a watt. And it's not that much in terms of potential safety concerns for the brain. So according to Kernel, it should all be safe. Now, in terms of detectors, the detector we have seen, they can detect red and infrared wavelengths. They have a single channel. So each detector has a channel and this channel sends the information back. They have a chip for detecting that is around 2.53 millimeters. This is what we are seeing right now in the video. Every one of these modules can capture up to 5 billion photons per second. So that's a lot of photons. And another thing that is interesting about this device is that there are no cables flying around there are no cables hanging around in fact all the cables kernel is promising they are embedded with the device and the only cable that is actually sticking out that we want to use and we want to see in fact it's the USB-C cable so kernel flow is using a USB-C cable for both power and data so data of course to connect to a computer and to see all the all the histograms all the information about your brain and power to power your device because of course it needs power it requires the same power as a laptop computer so about 100 watt not so much, yeah. Now, during the presentation, the kernel engineer discussed also the security concerns 
So in terms of actual privacy protection for the data that is gathered, which is something that has been addressed also by, by Neuralink in general, it's a very important concern for companies that are developing neural interfaces. So in terms of security, they did not go into full detail. They just mentioned the fact that they are including encryption, so encrypting the data to protect it. Now, in terms of the future, what is going to happen in the future for kernel and for kernel flow? Kernel is promising a paper to be published in 2021, detailing much more what is going on with their device, so in terms of technical features, and they're also promising to start production in fall of 2021. And the kernel founder, Brian Johnson, has had this vision, has proposed this vision of having a kernel flow device in each home by 2033. So let's hope, let's see. In terms of applications, what we can expect? Well, we can expect something similar with the other brain interfaces, so we can expect something that can monitor, help us monitor our levels of attention, focus and stress and performance. So we can gain a lot of metrics detailing how we are, who we are, how we are operating. So this is what we can do with kernel flow. In terms of price, $5,000. That is what we're promising. In terms of future developments, we're even considering future applications, something even more science fiction like wireless, wirelessly transmitting the data instead of having a cable. Or we're also considering something a bit more practical like a different design because so far this bicycle helmet design is not that appealing. They would like designers to work on something more aesthetically pleasant. So let me know your opinion in the comments. Let me know your opinion with respect to what Neuralink is working on. If you have seen also what Open Water and other companies are working on, let me know what do you think is the most promising company working on neural interfaces. If you like this video and if you want to see more videos on this topic, I invite you to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching. My name is Paolo and see you next time.